Should the federal government get rid of the Roth IRA? That's what we'll be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm best-selling author of The Power Zero, David McKnight. In a recent article on MarketWatch.com, the founder of Boston College's Center for Retirement Research, Alicia Munnell, opined that it's time to start thinking seriously about getting rid of the Roth 401k and the Roth IRA. She gave three reasons why. First, Roth IRAs can be hijacked by Congress to pay for expensive partisan legislation. By requiring that investors contribute portions of their retirement contributions to after-tax Roth accounts, the government realizes revenue immediately versus having to wait to receive that money until some point much further down the road. For example, in 2017, Congress considered requiring that all employee contributions to 401ks above $2,400 would go to a Roth. They didn't end up adopting that legislation, but that didn't stop them from continuing to try. For example, the primary source of funding for the House's bipartisan retirement bill, Secure uh, 2.0, is the requirement that all catch-up contributions to an IRA be deposited into a Roth IRA. My response, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because a few politicians are abusing the Roth IRA for budgetary purposes doesn't mean it should be summarily removed from the tax code. That's like saying that because some people drive recklessly, we should eliminate all automobiles. Second, Alicia Munnell thinks Roth IRAs should be eliminated because they can turn into tax dodges for high rollers like Peter Thiel. You may have read the ProPublica article, which reported that Peter Thiel had managed to accumulate more than $5 billion in his Roth IRA. He did this by buying a large number of shares at a fraction of a penny per share inside his Roth IRA, where it grew untaxed over the next 20 years. Peter Thiel continues to transact most of his business deals within the tax-free confines of his Roth IRA. My response, if this is as big a problem as Alicia Munnell proclaims, it seems it could be easily rectified. Simply ban non-publicly traded shares from being contributed to Roth accounts. Problem solved. Again, let's not completely destroy tax-free investment alternatives over issues that could be easily revolved with some tinkering around the edges. Third, Roths are an obstacle to fairer tax incentives. She makes a case for this in a bit of a roundabout way, so bear with me. According to Munnell, 401ks are inherently unfair because rich people benefit from them far more than poor people do. For example, if a high income earner in the 37% tax bracket contributes $1,000 to a 401k, they save $370 of federal tax. If conversely, a low-income earner in the 12% tax bracket contributes $1,000 to a 401k. They save $120 in tax. In an effort to create more equity, some academics have suggested simply providing a flat 26% tax credit for all 401k contributions, regardless of the participant's income tax bracket. That way, everyone would save $260 for that same $1,000 contribution. Well, of course, if this were to be implemented, any high-income earners would immediately redirect their contributions to a Roth 401k. They wouldn't hesitate to forego that 26% tax credit if it meant they could receive their distributions 100% tax-free at a period in time when tax rates are likely to be much higher than they are today. So, Munnell reasons, the only way to make this all-important transition from a deduction to a flat 26% tax credit is to eliminate the Roth 401k. My response, if Joe Biden were to adopt the 26% tax credit, then it would actually raise taxes on a broad swath of Americans who make less than $400,000 in violation of a promise he made during his presidential campaign, and all in the name of eliminating the Roth IRA and creating equality of outcome for Americans. What Alicia Munnell fails to ultimately address, however, is how tax-free retirement instruments like the Roth IRA and the Roth 401k are some of the only tools Americans have to shield themselves from the impact of higher taxes down the road. Former Comptroller General of the federal government, David Walker, has stated that tax rates will have to double by 2030 to pay for unfunded obligations like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Where would this leave the average American who didn't have the opportunity to protect themselves 
themselves from the impact of higher taxes by contributing to Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks. It would leave them sitting on the tracks, staring down a massive tax freight train. In summary, while the problems Alicia Munnell cites in her article aren't insanely irrational, her solution is eliminating Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks would dramatically limit the tax-free alternatives available to Americans who want to shield themselves and their hard-earned retirement savings from higher taxes that will hit our country like a freight train in less than 10 years. If you'd like some help shielding your retirement plan from the tax freight train, head on over to davidmcknight.com. I'm happy to lend a hand. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them into the comments section below. I'll respond to every single one of them personally. And don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.